Hello, today we are meeting Barbara Martens and she will give us some answers about contemplative psychology. Uh, oh, my interest in Buddhism goes very far. You know, when I was quite young, when I was in my teenager's um, time, I was very interested to understand the nature of reality. I was always asking questions like, why am I a woman and why is he a man and you know where do my thoughts come from and why do I have thoughts and why do I have emotion and I was looking in many many philosophical schools and then at one point I read a book of Trungpa Rinpoche and that gave my first answers and then I continued and continued and continued looking for the Buddhist uh, view on the world. First of all, it brought to me a kind of um, uh, interest, more interest even in the world. Then it brought to me uh, ways of being in the world without aggression, which I find very interesting and naturally not aggressive, not as a, a method or a, a, a concept I put on myself. It brought me more peace of mind and it also brought me more joy and humor in my life. Um, the purpose or our aspiration in contemplative psychology is that we try to uh, apply the knowledge, the wisdom that the Buddha found about human life, human existence, in confused and in uh, awake uh, manner, that we combine that with insights that Western therapeutic schools have found about how to communicate as human beings, how to live together as human beings, in relationship, in our work, and so forth. So we try to bring that together and apply it or look for it in our own experience. And then we let these insights inform what we do in our work life or what we do in our relationships and so forth. The best way to explain basic sanity, or sometimes we also say brilliant intrinsic sanity, the best way to explain it is uh, with a story that I've heard about uh, a, a monastery in Thailand. You know, there were monks and they had a statue in this uh, monastery, a big, quite old, not very beautiful statue of clay. And they were taking care of the statue and it has always been there and they thought, well, this is our statue, that's what we have. And then one summer, the, it was a very hot summer, and uh, when a monk was cleaning the statue and then he suddenly saw something golden blinking out of the statue. So he got interested and he went to the abbot and they looked into the statue and they found a very precious golden statue within this clay statue. And when they made research, they uh, found out that there was a time of war and of struggle when monks, at that time it was actually several hundred years ago, when monks had put the clay around the golden statue to protect it and not so that it doesn't get um, uh, in the hands of robbers or that it doesn't get destroyed. And from the perspective of Buddhist psychology, we say this is the same situation that we are in. in. We have surrounded ourselves with the protection wall of habitual patterns that we once thought would help us to survive. And then at a certain point, we think this is who we are. We think this protection wall is who we are. And what the Buddha found out, or what uh, we suggest in contemplative psychology, is that within or behind that protection wall, there is a basic um, um, equippedness or a basic um, uh, capacity to live our life completely. And that's meant by basic sanity. It's like this golden statue that we have that is independent of all this protection and habitual patterns we surrounded ourselves with. To discover the basic sanity is actually the purpose of contemplative psychology. First of all, it's, it's, uh, it's, that's an important and a very uh, courageous statement to say basic sanity is what we basically are and we have that as a birthright. 
to find out about that, we really have to explore. To believe it would not make sense. If we believe it, it's just another concept we put on ourselves. So how can we find out? How can we find out whether it's really true that this is something we all inherently have? One thing is that we have to find a method to look for that. You know? And that's a method that every human being can apply. We have to slow down and look deep into our experience. So that we have it, I explained that now. And we also, as human beings, have a, a basic, you can say, a bewilderedness that we bring into this life. A basic confusion, which is not a sin. It's just part of our being human. And if we are not trained in um, having access to our basic sanity, then basic confusion takes over. You know, and it's, uh, it's basic confusion is something that we always grasp for situations that make us feel good, which is a very intelligent and good thing to do. But we do that without understanding reality completely. So we grasp to things that sometimes are not, on the long run, not so good and not so um, well for us. So um, we create a lot of confusion uh, ar around our basic uh, sanity. And then our mind is full of the confusion and not full of the basic healthiness or basic sanity. And we, we need, someone needs to come and tell us that we have it. And someone needs to come and tell us how to train in it. That's, uh, we cannot, uh, it's easier if someone comes and tells us than finding it all on our own. We have situations where we are connected with it, you know, just without anybody telling us about it. It's when we see a beautiful flower or when we have a, um, uh, you know, I have children, I have two little children, and when they had uh, these sicknesses that little children have, you know, they were sometimes suffering a lot, but when they came out of the sickness, they grew. You know, they really grew into, like, speaking or walking or something. So they needed to go through the suffering to develop something new. And it's the same with our um, growing as human beings when we are older. So we need, we can find it in our experience on our own, but if someone tells us about it and tells us how to train it, we can have access quicker and it's more stable.